Thanks for checking out my video. If you want to learn more from me, I have a lot of classes on Udemy. You can find the links to a lot of those in the description. All right. So this is kind of an interesting concept that I've used in my own personal life plenty of times, but I'm really, I think that I've never talked about it on the channel before. And the, uh, you know, I love the idea of symbolism and I love the idea of allegory, meaning, you know, building a story around things because humans are storytellers. It's how we convey a lot of different ideas through stories. And one of the things we can think about is the stories that we tell ourselves, you know, and I like to think of it as because I grew up <laughs> playing nothing but video games and building things too, which maybe I'll make a video on like how that could relate to stuff, but that's, you know, maybe for another time. But I kind of treat life like a video game in some ways where it means that there's always an opportunity to try again and that there's always a way to figure something out. And even with, you know, solving like a, a problem or what I've listened to in a lot of different um, reels and podcasts about self-improvement and things like that would be treating things like puzzles. Now, if you guys have watched my channel for any length of time, and I've probably mentioned it time and time again, I'm a huge fan of The Legend of Zelda. And if you've ever played Breath of the Wild or Tears of the Kingdom, one of the things about all of the shrines in those games is that there is no one singular way that is intended to for you to solve a shrine puzzle. It's a sandbox in the way that you can figure out how to solve your problem and then achieve the goal. Well, I mean, life can be seen as very, very similar. There are plenty of people that have made successes with going to school and obtaining a degree and then obtaining a really good job. There are other people who have not gone to school, not obtained a degree, and have made, you know, great success of themselves. Like, I went through school. I have, I think, six degrees, you know, and I'm just a very, very academic person. And that's the the avenue through which I found my su success. My brother, on the other hand, dropped out of high school and ended up like basically teaching himself about computers and whatnot. He eventually got his GED later, but he found his success th without the benefit or with, if, you know, without the avenue of academics. So you have like a contrast right there. But so when we're trying to, when we have a problem, we know what our end goal is. You know, if I want to go from point A to point B, even if I'm playing Breath of the Wild or Tears of the Kingdom, I, if I want to go from where I am to this one location over here, let's say that I might not have enough, um, you know, skill yet to get there. Maybe I'll end up somewhere else and I'll find something else very, very awesome that I would, that I stumble on and it happens to be a success. Life is also very, very similar with you might be going for one thing, but you end up doing something completely different. My master's is in, you know, education and I may not be teaching, but through this channel and working with clients and doing my classes through Udemy, I am teaching, right? So it wasn't originally what I set out to do, but I'm still using my skills and whatnot in a similar capacity. So I didn't have the first goal that I wanted or that I was going for, but I sure as heck found su success and happiness in this secondary goal, I guess you could call it, where I am using those skills just in a different and arguably much more enjoyable capacity. It's fun being your own boss, you know? And even when it comes to things like relationships or getting that particular job, let's say you want to go after a relationship with a person and that doesn't exactly work out. Well, you know, I made a reel previously about, you know, thank God for all the prayers that went unanswered. So you might have wanted a relationship with a particular person, but that didn't end up working out, right? Well, 
what happened after that? Maybe you ended up in a relationship with somebody else and that relationship is great too. Or you're going after a particular job. You didn't get that job, but maybe the next job that you got was, you know, brought you just as much happiness. Sometimes we get so hyper-focused on wanting a particular goal and whatnot that we sell ourselves short with disappointment and frustration and anger about the fact that we didn't get what we wanted and we might sit there and stomp and pout and gripe and want and say, oh, the universe didn't give me, didn't give me this one thing, so I quit. Well, in a video game, you, you know, you can quit, you can put it down, you can take a break, but the next time that you pick it up, you're still in that same world and there's still objectives for you to do. So that's why another thing about video games is do-overs. Whether it's an argument with your um, significant other or you have a bad day at work or there's some puzzle or something that you were trying to figure out like when I'm when I was anytime I'm writing a book, if I'm stuck on a certain part of a book, I'll put it down and I'll take a break. And then I can go back to it and, you know, vis-a-vis -vis turning the video game on and trying again. So, you know, an argument with your spouse might not have gone well the first time. You take a break, you move on, maybe you have to go to work and whatever, and you say, we'll settle this later. And then you could say, oh, you know, that argument, I lost it, or they're not understanding me, or this didn't go very well. But you want to know what? Maybe the next time that you go and have that discussion, you actually get somewhere. So the idea and concept of do-overs can be very important, even with <clears throat> performing magic and spell work itself. Maybe the first attempt that you took a stab at obtaining that thing that you wanted didn't work, right? And then you might have done a spell and gone out into the real world and done some action and it didn't exactly manifest and you didn't get that thing that you wanted, well, guess what? You can go back to the drawing board, try another spell, try some more mundane action out there in the real world and figure out, okay, what have I not done that I could do in order to get the thing that I want? It's like in Breath of the Wild or Tears of the Kingdom. The one way that I'm trying to solve this shrine puzzle doesn't work. So I got to go back to the drawing board and I got to do, I got to do something different and see if that works. So there's always a way to solve a problem. And the reason why you haven't solved it is because a, maybe that method doesn't exactly work or B, you haven't found, and they're kind of the same thing. B, you haven't found the right solution for that particular puzzle. If you think of life's problems as puzzles, I think that it makes things a lot easier to conceptualize because when we think of a problem, it's more of a heavy word. A puzzle denotes the idea that it can be solved. And <clears throat> just, sorry, frog in my throat this morning because I just woke up, got out of the shower, and I decided to come down here and make a video, you know. But if you conceptualize life as a video game per se, or even life as a book, you know, you're writing your own story. You're in the middle of your own story. Does your book stop here? No, it hasn't come to an ending yet, right? So you can put the book down and you could stop reading it, but those characters and whatnot in that book will still, they'll still be there the next time you pick the book up and you pick up where you left off and the story continues. Your life is the same. If you have a failure or something doesn't work, guess what? There's always that opportunity to try again. You can still write more pages. You could even write arguably a sequel because, you know, a lot of times maybe at the end of a, uh, at the end of the first book, in some cases, or the end of the uh, second book, in other cases, it leaves on a cliffhanger or a problem that is still to be solved. And then it's up to the author to write another book to expand the story and solve that problem and maybe bring up some new ones because we all know we run into things every day and just because you were focusing on this one problem that you have right now whether it's a relationship a career or, or what have you you solve that problem are you going to be scot-free for the rest of your life without any frustrations or issues no stuff always comes up right so you got to think about one how many other problems slash puzzles have you solved before and two that there is a solution to the current problem that you are in. So just kind of a thought experiment, food for thought, whatnot. Let me know what you guys think about this one. And let me know if you have any, you know, life experiences that you could relate to this kind of thing down in the comments. I always love starting discussions with people on what 
they think about the different content that I put out. If you want to get in touch with me, definitely shoot me an email. You can follow the links through my link tree or check the email in the description because I'm always looking for more people to work with and more ways to engage the people that I connect with and definitely always teach something. So if you want to learn something, I got plenty of opportunities. Good hunting.